Carolyn Glick. Welcome to the 50th episode of the Carolyn Glick Middle East News Hour and the first Carolyn Glick Middle East News Hour that we're doing in our new home, Jewish News Syndicate, JNS.org. Um, this is a very special week and a very special uh, episode. It's a special week because this week Israel marks uh, two very important days. First, our Memorial Day to our fallen soldiers and victims of, of terrorism. And second, uh, Independence Day. Israel turned 74 this week as well, the day after Yom HaZikaron, uh, Israel's Memorial Day. Um, and this is a very uh, special show, not only because it's the first episode with Jewish News Syndicate, Jewish uh, JNS, but also because of my guest today, Professor Yisrael Oman, a Nobel Prize laureate for economics from 2005, and really one of the most important thinkers that we have in Israel and in the world in the area of mathematics and game theory. Um, and uh, Professor Oman, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today, well, this I'm, week. It's a big honor to be on your show, Carolyn. <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere. Let's quit <laughs> with the Professor Alman. Let's Israel. Okay, okay Israel. Um, so I thought it was important to talk to you this week, um, not only because of who you are uh, professionally and your work in rationalism and game theory, because I feel increasingly that the world we live in is becoming dominated by irrationality. Um, but also because you're a bereaved father and your son, your oldest son, Shlomo, uh, was killed in the first Lebanon war in June of 1982. Um, and I thought I would start with that, if you don't mind, because uh, also we're surrounded in your living room. I don't think that our viewers can see, but right behind me is a picture of, um, of uh, Jacob's children coming to him with... Uh, with, uh, with Joseph's uh, coat of many colors and saying, look, this is what's happened to your son. Your favorite, your beloved son has died. And in front of me, I have a picture of the binding of Isaac and the, an and the angel coming down from heaven and saying to Abraham, don't kill your child <laughs> after he was ready to do so because he was commanded to do so by God. And um, is it, you think, is Zionism rational? Is it rational to, to send a child to, to serve in the army? Um, people today in this world of me only, not just me too, but also uh, say, no, uh, we should just worry about ourselves. Uh, OK, so that touches on one of the first things you said, and that is that uh, war is irrational. I didn't say war is irrational. Uh, I thought you said that. Uh, no, I uh, said a Zionism is no, irrational. No, 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 no. At the beginning of your talk, at the beginning of your words, you said you, we have we were faced with a world uh, that is irrational. The world, the world is irrational, right. and and uh, and I'm not sure about that. Uh, in fact, um, one of the one of the points I tried to make uh, when presenting my Nobel speech, my Nobel address, uh, when you get the Nobel Prize, you have to give a speech also, a, a professional speech. And I spoke about uh, the, the subject of my speech was uh, war and peace, okay? Right. And I think that... Um, a, a, People think that war is irrational, but uh, uh, if you consider war irrational, then you can't do anything about it. People fight wars because they are threatened, okay, uh, or, or, or they feel threatened, and uh, the, the, the question is whether one can... Um, you know, in order to prevent war, one has to one has to study the causes of war, and the causes of war are uh, um, 
are that that people feel threatened and and uh, and one has to try to overcome uh, one has to try to study those things and see what it is that ma makes people f uh, feel threatened and and uh, and overcome those uh, causes those uh, uh, factors now um, is Zionism rational? Uh, not perhaps on the individual level, okay? On the individual level. But yes, on the level of the collective as a, a living vibrant unit, okay? Uh, we live not only as individuals, we live also uh, in collectives, all kinds of collectives. We have the family, we have the, uh, uh, we have uh, the, uh, perhaps uh, the workplace, okay? Uh, we have a sports team, we have uh, uh, we we have nations, okay? For example, you could say, is it rational if if a, a father sees his uh, son? Uh, uh, they went out for a picnic, and he sees his son uh, drowning in 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 a in a river or in a swimming hole. Is, is it rational for him to risk his own life and jump after his son, yes? So the answer is yes. It's, the answer is no. On a certain level, it's not rational. If the father is looking out for himself only, okay, uh, it's not rational for him to risk his life for his son. But no, everybody else would say that it is highly rational for the father to risk his life for his son, okay? So um, uh, uh, the, the, that is because the father lives not only for himself, but he is part of the collective, which is the family, okay? So now uh, uh, we have all kinds of collectives, yes? And one of the collectives we have is the nation, and especially the Jewish nation, okay, which has existed for uh, uh, thousands of years, all right? Uh, 3,500 to be precise, or to be not entirely precise, but almost precise. Now, uh, uh, it, so it, it, if you think about yourself only or your family only, then it's not rational. But if you think about yourself as part of this glorious um, collective, which is the Jewish nation, then it is rational uh, to, to say, go become part of this unit Go and and go join the army, and uh, and and of course nobody asks Shlomo whether he wants to be uh, join the army, but it it was a good thing. He felt good about it. And there's in one of his letters, a, 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 he wrote a beautiful letter upon being um, uh, how does one say uh, inducted inducted into the army. That's right. That's the word. Uh, saying that uh, he realizes that he uh, that this is no joke, this is no uh, and and that he uh, he may have to give a lot to uh, including his life for the uh, for the um, uh, uh, as for for displaying that he, and he didn't use those words, those are the words I'm using, but displaying that he is part of this collective. The collective is also a living thing. So from the point of view of the collective, it is rational, highly rational, okay? And otherwise, we, will, we would be uh, destroyed, yes? You know, you, you know, And you could say, let, let somebody else fight, okay? Let somebody else fight. I'll sit at home. Okay. We'll we'll avoid we'll avoid going to fighting units. 
and and uh, um, will will go will sit at home or will join uh, 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 rear rear units. Uh, that it's a possibility, but it's it's not it, it it's not rational for the collective not to fight. Yes, we it, Israel has been fighting for a hundred years for its existence. Okay, a hundred years, more than a hundred years. It's now twenty twenty two, and and we the the uh, uh, the the first riots. Uh, occurred in I think in 1920 or 21, 20. 1920. 20. So we've been fighting already. That's a hundred years war. Okay, now who's gonna do it? Yes, who's gonna do it? If every it, 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 so on, on a very narrow basis, it's irrational. But if you think in slightly broader terms, then. It's well, what about let's let's widen the expanse. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. t you made Aliyah from the United States. You were born in Germany. Yes. Your family escaped shortly before Kristallnacht in 1938, and you came to the United States, uh, where you were able to acclimate very very quickly into the American Jewish community, into the United States. You went to City College. You got your doctorate at MIT, post doctorate at Princeton. You had your pick of universities where you could be a tenured professor of mathematics in 1955, and you chose to make Aliyah, to join your brother here, and become a professor at Hebrew University. Um, that's, that's a big decision. Um, you, you could have stayed in the United States, probably got a job uh, teaching at MIT or any of these other universities, and and just been an American Jewish professor of mathematics, uh, maybe you would have gotten the Nobel Prize in the 1990s already. I mean, you know, it, you made a decision. You decided to come here and uh, live out your Zionist b faith, belief. Um, is that rational? It's, it's, uh, at the same level, yes, it is the highly rational. Let me explain. Let me um uh enlarge on that a little bit uh we've been saying for thousands of years we yes we have been saying for thousands of years believe three times a day believe shalayim ircha berachamim uh uh uh, 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 we pray to God that he return in mercy to Jerusalem, his city. Now, um, when in Frankfurt, where I spent the first eight years of my life, the Jewish community was anti-Zionist. The, the the Haredi Jewish community was anti-Zionist, to which I belong. Yeah, uh, was anti-Zionist because uh, because the Zionists were not observant. Okay, they uh, they were not that deep. And now uh, um, and and when we came to America, we maintained this. Uh, my family more or less maintained this uh, not very strong, but we were not, uh, we, we didn't sympathize with the Zionist movement. But after the war, uh, with the struggle for the establishment of the state, my family, my brother and I and my parents made a 180 degrees turn, and we became ardent pro-Zionists. The, the struggle for the uh, for the uh, making of the state, uh, the, the Haganah and the, uh, and the Irgun and the Lehi uh, and the, uh, the struggle with the British and the Arabs, um, it's caught our imagination. And we determined to make Aliyah, my, my whole family, my brother and I. And my brother made Aliyah, as you said, in 1950, and I joined him later on. And uh, um, the reason is the same thing. We feel part of the Jewish people, okay? 
we are not only ourselves, and that is, it, 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 we're not, we're not just each, we are part of the Jewish people, and I, and uh, uh, the, the, we, uh, the, this, this is, a, a, we feel part of this big unit, which is the Jewish people, which, which I'm, I'm, very glad because <laughs> every morning we say Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech Olam Shelo Atzani Goy. Okay, uh, blessed are you, uh, King of the our universe. God, King of the Universe, who didn't make me a Goy. <laughs> okay, everybody knows what a Goy is. Uh, and and uh, in other words, who made me a Jew? Yes. Who, who gave me the privilege to be part of this great nation which has existed for thousands of years and has maintained its identity not, like no other nation, it has maintained its identity over the millennia. Uh, and, and I'm part of this, and I'm not going to, to take part in it. Uh, it's, it's, okay. You know that, uh, that Soloveitchik said, "Kol do di do fek." Yes, my, uh, my uh, the the uh, uh, voice of my lover is knocking. Okay, my lover is Hakadosh Baruch Hu, is God, and and he knocks at the door. He says, "Here is the state of Israel, which is renewing itself after thousands of years." Am I not going to open to him? Am I not going to respond? Yes. You know, it's interesting that you were saying that Shiloh uh, Asali Goy, right? Mm -hmm. And because they, we in in the parsha that we read in the in in the synagogue last Shabbat, Kedoshim. Uh, so there's a question: Shiloh Asali Goy, why don't we say thank you for making me a Jew? Yeah, right. And then there's and then there's a back and forth. I can't remember. I was reading it. Uh, maybe it was Rabbi Sachs. I can't remember uh, who was giving. Uh, uh, there were two. There were two interpretations of that, and um, uh, it was a Rambam and somebody else. But in the end, they came to the conclusions because God, w it's our responsibility yes. to be uh, to make our our being a member of the of the nation of Israel for being a Jew. Um, meaningful and by living up to the mitzvot that, that uh -huh. he gave. Okay, very so that good. it was we, that didn't make me a goy, but the determination of whether we're a Jew or not is ours. Very good, wonderful, right? wonderful. Oh, I got it. Look at the wonderful. A is wonderful. For me. Well, wonderful. I, well, it's right on. Yes. So I mean, and and that really does bring us to the irrationality that I was talking about. At the outset, and and I think that there was a um, uh, like maybe I misunderstand. I didn't say war is irrational. I don't think war is irrational. I think one of I think that a lot of the things that are happening today in Israel are irrational uh, in terms of maintaining the existence of this country. And I'll just give you one example. I may mean, give you many, but I'll give you just one example. This past week, uh, the education minister uh, Yifat Shasha Biton announced her new reform in the education that she's going to end uh, requirements for high school matriculation uh, of taking uh, matriculation exams or baccalaureate exams, whatever they're called in, in English, the Bagriot, in uh, the Bible, in history, in, in literature, um, and in some other uh, of the subjects of the humanities, and, and really that teach children who they're supposed to be. On the other hand, she's going to lower the uh, level of, of um, acuity or uh, that uh, a child needs in order to study computers so that more kids can get into the rear units in the army where they work with computers uh, by lowering the, the qualifications they need uh, to, th to three units instead of four or five uh, in, in the baccalaureate exams. And so, it, and, and we see this, and, and yesterday uh, the 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 Arabs, the Muslims on the Temple Mount put up a huge banner from Hamas uh, on the wall of the Temple Mount. And they had, there had been a big thing in Israel that they put up a flag of the PLO 
on the Temple Mount. It was there for 10 days. This never happened. They were burning the flag of Israel. And they finally took it down and put it back after three hours. So one of the uh, members of this government, uh, communications minister, Yoaz Hendel, said, oh, what do we care about what flag is on the Temple Mount? The most important thing is to fight terrorism. So on the one hand, you have an education system that's decided not to teach Jewish children their history or their uh, heritage. And on the other hand, you have a minister in the government who says, what do we care that Hamas is putting a banner and the Israeli flag is being burned? The most important thing is what we do on the ground, not, not symbolism. And I think that these two things are both incredibly disheartening, but also a question of you know, an answer to the Rambam, how are you going to be a Jew here in Israel? So now having said that, what do you think of my Jer Jeremiah? <laughs> well, I'm with you entirely. I mean, I think it's very, very important to to know why you are, what you're doing here. Yes. It's difficult to live in Israel. And if you don't know why you want to live in Israel, then, uh, then, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really quite uh, pessimistic about this. I'm, I'm quite pessimistic. I, I think uh, um, the, co the current government is, is, uh, um, is, not, uh, is, is not doing what it should be doing, and, and, and specifically with regard to the two items that you mentioned. I should say that there's been a lot of uh, discussion of these, uh, of, uh, of this um, edict or this development on the part of the education minister, and there's been a, a, a lot of uh, discussion about this, a lot of criticism of it, not only from the right wing, which is sitting right here, okay? <laughs> but also from, uh, I would say, uh, the left wing and even the extreme left wing, okay? So uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, Academy of Sciences, the, uh, the, Israeli, the Israel Academy of Sciences uh, has, uh, or oh, Humanities and Sciences, I forget the exact name of it, has uh, come out squarely against this move on the part of the education minister. And uh, we, we have all kinds of people in the Academy of Sciences, but, uh, uh, but a lot of them are on the left and some of them are on the extreme left. Well, yes, I think that's because they get the publishing and, and, contracts. And, and uh, it has come out and also the... the, uh, the uh, um, the governance, yes, the president, the vice president, so on of the of the, of the uh, academy are uh, politically not exactly with the two of us, okay? No. Uh, but they have come out against this. So there's been a lot of criticism of that move. Uh, and, and I think, uh, I wouldn't say there's a consensus against it, but there is a lot of criticism against it. Now, the... the uh, and the, the the thing on the uh, on the Temple Mount, I wasn't aware of this uh, that you mentioned. Oh, I was not aware of this, but uh, it certainly sounds very very bad. Because on the one hand, you say we have to fight terror, and on the other hand, we have this which is an incitement to terror. We have this episode which is sounds to me like an incitement to terror. Now, terror, you don't only fight on the ground, that you have to fight it. And it's, it's one of the things that, uh, 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 one of the important uh, um, uh, sections or pro provisos in the Oslo Agreement was that uh, uh, there should be education to uh, peace, to uh, living together between the uh, Arabs and the Jews and, and uh, and that uh, we, we, we never insisted that that uh, part of the Oslo Agreement be kept. 
Well, we tried in Netanyahu's first government. I mean, they opened up the they opened up the, a subcommittee on incitement, and they were going through all of the Palestinian school books. And so but then nothing an happened. Yeah. Well, because they won't stop inciting, right? I mean, that, that's uh, really the problem. I, I, we didn't insist on this, yes. But we you can't did not, have the Oslo agreement. We did not agreement. insist on I mean, you can't have the Oslo agreements and expect them to be implemented fully on the Palestinian side. The, 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 the things that are in the Oslo Accords that give the Palestinian things on Israel's side, all of that is required implementation, but uh, everything that the Palestinians are supposed to do is overlooked. I mean, they have not abided by any of their obligations. To let me, let me uh, make a footnote on this. Uh, you keep talking about Palestinians. I don't like that term, and I like to ask, I'd like to ask you to uh, uh, stop using it, uh, not only in this uh, conversation, but also in the future conversations that you will conduct. Uh, the use of the word Palestinians, as you use it, to refer to Arabs only is, is a big, big mistake. And it's a big mistake that either we and the Oslo Agreement uh, initiated, and it's a big mistake because it implies that these are the natives, okay? And we are colonialists. Okay, we are invaders from uh, from Europe. Okay, colonialists, and these are the natives, and it's not the case. Okay, it's not the case. Uh, uh, in in eighteen ninety, or even in eighteen eighty five, there was an absolute Jewish majority in Jerusalem. Right. The most of the people living in over fifty percent of the people, not a plurality, not more than anyone else, yes, but more than fifty percent of the population of Jerusalem was Jewish. That's back in eighteen eighty five, and 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 uh, it it the the uh, we have been uh, in in during the mandate, the coins on the coins was written Palestine on one side in Arabic and English, and on the other side of the mandate coins, those issued by the British, was written Eretz Yisrael, okay, was written the land of Israel. Uh, the, the, uh, we, we are, the, the Palestine Symphony Orchestra was all Jewish, okay? Right. Uh, the, the Palestine Post is now what's called the Jerusalem Post, but it was called the Palestine Post. Pal we, my wife has Palestinian papers, okay? She has a Palestinian identity card, still, now, okay? She's a Palestinian. We are Palestinian Jews, and the Arabs over here, who, are, we, we, who are, we have a quarrel with, are Palestinian Arabs, not just Palestinians, okay? So, so I, I think that's a very important, uh, uh, it's a very important point, but now, uh, that w what did you ask about the Palestinian Arabs? <laughs> I don't remember, but I'll, I'll tell you one thing that I was thinking about the Hamas uh, banner over the Temple Mount and the flag of the PLO and all the rest. And by the way, your 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 point is very well taken. My my sense of that has always been, and and you're not the first person to say, why do you keep calling these people Palestinians? And I feel that the our language has been so. Um, eroded and our understanding and our precision in our language has been so eroded that you know you have to pick your battles and my sense and perhaps I'll have to revisit it has always been that to have a battle over that is less important or less it's not necessarily the hill that you want to be fighting for right now since we're overwhelmed by so many different lies but that really goes to another question which is about the war of ideas and the and the question if we're not putting information into the heads of our children, obviously by not teaching them their history, by not teaching them their Bible and 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 their great works of literature and everything that is Jewish heritage. Um, it's not only, by the way, it, uh, no, Western uh, by, right. it's also Shakespeare is out. Yeah? Absolutely. No, but it's but but I just just to just to try to drive, you know, yeah. to hole in on this point. So you know, I, I was looking at um, the the assassination of Mayor Kahana in 1990 the other day for some uh, work that I was doing ahead of an article. 
And you know, one of the things that was so notable about that, Mayor Kahana was, you can say he was a racist, you can say he was whatever, he was an extremist, he had all of these ideas. That's a completely different conversation. So let's put it just there. But he was assassinated by this man named Said Nusser, who was one of the founders of this, um, of the first active jihadist cell in the United States, along with this uh, blind sheikh from, uh, uh, from uh, from Egypt, who was involved in the assassination of Sadat. And so Mayor Kahan is killed in 1990. And everybody's looking at this and saying, well, it's not terrorism. The guy was crazy. He's acting on his own. They didn't, the FBI, the New York police, he was killed in, in New York. Uh, the FBI and the New York Police Department didn't look into any of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of documents that Nusser had in his house or in his locker at work that all talked about their plans. Among them was blowing up the World Trade Center. And they only started looking at him after the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center. And the prosecutor of the World Trade Center bombing from 1993 is an old colleague of mine named Andrew McCarthy. And he's written copiously about this, including in a book called Willful Blindness. And what his main point was, from the American perspective, was that the United States, both in the years preceding 9-11 and in the 20 years since, has refused completely to look into the ideas that animate the mind of a jihadist and why it is that they're making war on the United States, that they've never had, they've never had a willingness uh, in America to look at the beliefs the convictions of people who are trying to annihilate the United States. And as a result, they can never win. As a result, they're, they put footprints in the, in, in the, in the desert of, deserts of Iraq and in the mountains of Kush in Afghanistan, and they're all gone, and they've all blown away with the wind, particularly in Afghanistan um, after 20 years of war. And um, I, I feel that increasingly in the United States, rather than ever paying attention to the people who are fighting America, and now in Israel as well, particularly under this government, but not only, you have, an, you have on the one hand an extraordinarily lack of curiosity about what's happening on the other side and what's animating them, but at the same time, both in the United States and in Israel, you have this recoiling from our own culture and our own identity and our own heritage and not and and this rejection of even learning about it and um, let me just put it out there is how do you what is what is the thought process you think that's driving on the one hand this refusal to reconcile with the with the way that the enemy thinks and on the other hand this rejection of how we've always thought about ourselves and about our world. Uh, should I give it to you straight, Caroline? Yeah. Okay. That's what we're here for. Yeah, I'm going to give it to you. Straight. That's what we're paying in the big bucks. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you straight. Uh, First of all, let me make just a small remark about the Palestinian thing. Yes, I'm not saying you should fight it. Yes, you, you have to pick your battles, you're right. But you, Carolyn Glick, okay, should, instead of using the word Palestinian, just make it a, a split second longer and say Palestinian Arab. Okay. 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 All right. I'll make, okay. I'll, I'll make an effort. You know what? Right. I'm going to make an effort. Okay, that's one thing. But now I'm going to give you straight the answer, okay? And that's, uh, I don't have time to make up a different answer. And I'm going to say it this way. Uh, peace now, okay? We haven't heard too much from peace now uh, lately. But well, they have uh, so but, many spin-offs. But, 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 you know? uh, but uh, they did make a big impression in Israel. Uh, was not born in the 1970s. It had uh, an ancestor, and that ancestor was called Brit Shalom, okay, the covenant of peace. And it operated in uh, Israel in the 20s and 30s and 40s, okay? Magnus, right? Magnus, that's Uber. right. Magnus, and my aunt, 
Miss Landau, who you may have heard of, yes? No? I don't know. Okay. She was the principal of the Evelina de Rothschild School, mm -hmm. okay? And she hobnobbed with uh, with uh, the British and the Arabs, and the, she gave these parties and so on. Yeah. And all kinds of people, okay? Academics and... and and they were actually against the establishment of the Jewish state. I mean, they were yes, uh, 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 they they were against against the establishment of the Jewish state. And this was brought to the attention of Ben Gurion. Okay, and Ben Gurion said they uh, Ben Gurion said. Uh, uh, he was asked, "What are you going to do with these people?" Okay. So he said, I'm not going to do anything with them. Let them uh, do spout their uh, philosophy. I'm going to build a state. And he did it, okay? But he made a big mistake. He built the state, but he allowed the seeds of the destruction of the state to remain active and powerful. Magnus was the president of the Hebrew University, okay? And he uh, and the spirit of Brit Shalom, uh, which whose descendant was peace now, yes, uh, invaded academia and uh, took over acad not took over. There are lots of uh, 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 academic people who are with us, okay. But uh, it, it, to a large extent, it took over the intellectual part of the uh, uh, country. And as I was saying, most of the uh, administration, most of the, uh, of the Academy of Sciences are people on the left, yes. Um, now, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and and we have as a result that most of the most of academia is on the is 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 not enthusiastic is well, on the left okay so and 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 we have this kind of statement coming out from the government as a result and we have this kind of attitude to toward the what's happening on the temple mount as a result because these are the people who control academia, they control the media, they control the uh, second level of government. No matter who's in the government, also Netanyahu, also Begin, yes. Uh, we have the second level uh, is, is the people who actually carry out policy, okay? And when they carry out policy, they're really making policy. These are all people who are less than enthusiastic. They're not patriots, okay? Now, uh, um, okay, that, that is one thing. But, but, the, but I think underlying this, underlying this whole thing is that in order to feel in order to feel, uh, Ben Gurion himself. Let me give you another uh, another example about Ben Gurion. Uh, he himself was not Dati. Okay, he himself was not observant. Okay, and in fact, most of the, what what I said before about the the Haredi community in Frankfurt, uh, the 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 most of the Zionist establishment. The people who made the state, okay, were not observant, okay. Now, but they had observant roots, okay. Exactly. They had observant roots. Their parents were observant. If not their parents, they probably their parents were, but they or the grandparents. These people were people who were saying three times a day for thousands of years, okay, and return to. Uh, praying to God to return to his city, Jerusalem, in mercy. And this, this is what gives it meaning, okay? Now this, is, you can, you, this passes through one generation, two generations, three generations, but not five generations, okay? Not five generations. And, and, and I think, uh, a large part of this of the of the uh, 
the drift away from being Jewish with all your heart, okay? The drift away from that, and together with that, the love of Zion is because of secularism. I, I, I agree. I want to ask you one question and then move to an, another question. So the, the first question, is, the first time I met you, I think, was in 2008. I, I remember this like it was yesterday. I don't know why, but uh, because you made such a big impression on me. We were both speaking in, at an event uh, in Toronto, and, uh, and you gave a speech um, about... Uh, Jacob fighting with the angel. Yeah, right. Do you remember it? I remember the event in Toronto. Yes, I remember mentioning that. Yes, but where did I take it? Yes. You said that the angel comes to Jacob, and Jacob and he are fighting. They're struggling. And Jacob's hitting him, saying, and, and he wants to leave. The angel wants to leave. He's tired. And Jacob says to him, you can't you can't leave until you bless me, until you bless me, yeah. right? And, and like the, the angel wants to go and Jacob won't let him go. And it was such an extraordinary, like the way that you depicted it, I, I could see it happening, you know, so you did a great job, I'm not. Um, but you said that basically the, the angel was the anti-Semite and that, and that Jacob was demanding that the that the anti-Semite, that the the prototypical anti-Semite, the hater of the Jews, that he accept Jacob, that Jacob wasn't gonna, I guess maybe you could say I'll, I'll expand it, that Jacob wasn't gonna be trying to be Asaph, his brother anymore. He will he accept me, yeah. and and uh, and and it was and it was a beautiful concept that we have to demand acceptance, that we have to command acceptance in order to be accepted that if he hadn't done this and he came away wounded yeah. then it wouldn't have happened and then that brings me to the second question that i want you to talk about for a second because i i absolutely i mean there's a reason that i wanted to talk to you this week i mean i wanted to talk to you for a, a long time but i wanted to talk to you also when we had the opportunity to do it in your masikaron and your mats mode i wanted to speak with you but we have this weird thing going on now where we have the most radical government arguably ever, uh, which is, you know, where you have the Muslim Brotherhood has veto control over everything. Um, and it's led by a man who both of us know very well, Naftali Bennett, who wears a kippah. And, uh, and, his, and he came from the religious Zionist community, and yet he's overseeing this extraordinary drift or pull, and 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 it's and it goes back to the question of sort of this postmodern rejection of our heritage and feeling like, well, what happens in my four walls of my house is the only thing that matters, and the world outside is not as important as I am. And so the you have two things sort of going on. On the one hand, is Jacob going to be capable of what? you know, demanding and commanding acceptance? Or are we going to just sort of say it's all about me? It's all what? About me. It's all, it's all me and, you know, what my title is. Well, uh, okay. Uh, um... Okay, Bennett is problematic, but... Uh, I mean, it's not really just yeah. him. He's bringing a very large number. I don't know, if, it's not the majority, but it's a significant portion of the religious Zionist community is supporting what he's doing. I mean, that's sort of more yeah. shocking than the fact that you have an opportunist that, you know, played people for and fools. I, I think uh, at the point that the, of the current government was formed, there was, there was an impasse, okay? And um, but by the way, what's happening? <laughs> uh, 
I, I don't I, I, I don't answer this question now, but I, I don't quite understand what's happening because one member of parliament... Uh, of the coalition. Uh, of the coalition quit. So we have a, now it's 60-60, yes. So, and, and this Shilke now was also sent away uh, or something happened. I don't follow the news that closely. So, just yes, very... yes, so, but it seems to me now that the government has only 59 members. No, Shikli was already gone. So they only had... Ah, Shikli was gone before. Sh Shikli never joined the coalition. He Ah, he, he never joined the coalition. So it's 60-60. So one would expect that the government will fall any moment, but it's not falling. Okay. All right, that, that's a side point. That, that I, I want to relate to, to your question. Uh, uh, the, the current government was formed at the time that uh, at the time that there was an impasse. Okay, there, and and uh, Netanyahu was unable to form a government, and he w wanted to form a government also with the Muslim Brotherhood. Right. Yes, right. He also wanted to form a government with the, with the Muslim bro Brotherhood, and and uh, it's only a smart trick that prevented him from doing that. Right. And what's interesting here is that yes. the reason that we got to this impasse is because you have a large segment of the right that prefer to go to the left, you know, with the Brit Shalom types, yes. than to go with Netanyahu and the League. That's Party. right. That's right. And that is entirely correct. I'm entirely with you. And I blame Netanyahu for not stepping down. I think the whole, I've said this again and again. I've published, I think, in Makorishon. Yeah, I read it. I've published three or four articles saying the same thing again and again. Uh, uh, you know, months apart or years apart, yes. I probably say, I said the same thing. I have a lot of respect for Netanyahu. He did wonderful things. He also, uh, uh, when he had the opportunity, did not do some some things that would have been wonderful. Yes, I'll get back to that later. But one thing that he should have done was step down and let the right unite. Okay. And and uh, uh, the the uh, the uh, election battles uh, the the what did we have four elections yep. for uh, these were around not important na uh, issues of na uh, uh, nationality but it was about yes baby not baby yes baby not baby yes now. Uh, 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 I've said this uh, in in uh, sotto voce, Wait, but, but just... I've said I want to say it. Loud. It's Netanyahu's fault. It's his fault. But what he about should've... the people who who who? What? I mean, the the counter argument, which I'd also like you to address, is that you know, uh, Gidon Sar, he ran against Netanyahu for Likud leadership, and he lost. And instead of accepting that. He formed a spin-off party from the Likud that was organized around the unitary principle of hating Netanyahu. That's and, right. and so, you know, why is the responsibility on, uh, I mean, I think you would say m uh, predominantly on Netanyahu's shoulders when you have so many people who simply wouldn't accept the decision of a very large majority of, of the Likud, of but Likud. not of the country, okay? Not of the country. Not a large, a minority of the country. Yeah, but okay, a much the, larger Carolyn, minority. A minority of the country, and and the Likud is not the country. Yeah, and we see that now. The Likud is not the country. He, he, he lost in the primaries of the Likud, but the most of the country, not most by uh, by a large margin, but most by a small margin, fifty one percent or fifty two percent or something one. like that, were against Netanyahu, and Netanyahu insisted on staying in. And now I, 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 I'm I'm talking about national politics. I'm talking about the national consensus. Now Netanyahu, by by insisting, I'm still now insisting on staying in. Yes. Insisting now is is uh, I think is splitting the right 
and I put the the uh, the I have a lot of respect for him, but I put the the uh, the onus squarely on his shoulders. It's not uh, uh, you could say the what's the what's the man's name who split off? Kiran uh, Sar. Sar, Sar, of course, yes. <laughs> I'm an old man. I forget things. Okay, uh, and and uh, but so so Sar maybe was wrong in in his allegiance to the Likud, but in 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 his in his by his reckoning he was right in his allegiance to the country. Most of the country, most by a small margin, but still a majority is against Netanyahu. Now now Netanyahu should should have realized that and he should have stepped down. Now, I sing the praises of Netanyahu. The Abraham Accords were a great, uh, uh, a great uh, um, uh, accomplishment. Netanyahu, as my finance minister, put the country on the right track. He, he was great, he, but he was not altogether great, yeah, because he did not succeed in making use of the Trump administration. In in uh, in advancing our interest, and in fact, in the in in um, what's it called, uh, Lusapeach in English, uh, the, the uh, application uh, of sovereignty what, in Judea and Samaria. The, what's the word for Let's say It's annexation. Uh, an, an, uh, an ex yes, we have been now. Uh, it's now since 1967. It's 55 years. Okay, 55 that... years we have been. Occupying people say that to talk about kibush, about occupation, is is uh, is not uh, is not uh, uh, is is anti-Zionist. But uh, no, but we have a kibush. We have we are occupying the uh, Judea and Samaria. We are occupying it, and we have not had the courage to declare to go out and, and, and say, this is our country. Well, we that brings us back, right, to Jacob and the angel. Because in my rendition right now when I'm talking to you, it goes back to Brit Shalom, and it goes to the people in Meretz, and to Peace Now, and all, I mean, you say you don't see too much of it, it's because they have 100 spinoffs, you know, and, and so you don't need to talk about Peace now, now because its little progeny have gone off and done great things for for the cause of of anti-Zionism, and you you look at that and if you see, it's also it's not a necessarily only an external struggle with the anti-Semite, but it's also an internal an struggle. internal Absolutely. struggle of are we capable of commanding respect for ourselves and who we are, including replete with our homeland in Judea and Samaria But this is Netanyahu. Or not. We had the, I remember that evening when, he, when uh, uh, Trump was talking, yes, and, and Netanyahu was talking that evening. And at that time, there was a golden opportunity, yes, to 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 uh, uh, to to, uh, to, uh, to annex annex maybe is a bad word to but apply to, to, law. To, to make large parts of Judea and Samaria uh, 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 make it part of Israel and they are part of Israel and they should be called part of Israel they should not be called occupied territory but they are now occupied territory and Netanyahu did not take advantage of that. Situation. He was not. He did not succeed in doing that. And by the way, the right, including you, Carolyn, okay, uh, it was part of that failure because they were opposed to. The, I was. Uh, I was completely for it. I was for the. Uh, you were for the the for deal the, of the century. Yes, I was running around the entire country talking to anybody who would listen to me, saying, right. "Stop opposing it." So no, no, no. That, don't besmirch my good name. Okay, fine. But no, All right, but, good, know, good. No, 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 it's no, no, good, no, it's no, good no, that no, we no. have this that, conversation that because better. you have set the record no. straight. <laughs> so fine. If you were for the deal of the century. Then I all my respect and all my honor to you. And let me shake Thank your you hand. Thank you very much. Because this was one of the big fashlot, one of the big uh, failures yep. of the right of the right that they and and it had a big made a big impression on Trump 
on Trump himself. I know. Look, that he was not willing, voice, that the right was not willing to accept the deal of the century. No, I haven't stopped. I'm amazed that there's still hair in my head because I pulled it out so many times <laughs> over this thing. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. I ought to be completely the, bald. The, uh, uh, and, and, but it's also Netanyahu. But well, here now, is... Netanyahu should have ignored the right. And I, I need to. I need to get. I understand that that you have a full belly, as we say in Hebrew, on Netanyahu. But I think. I, I think here we are this week. We have this government. I. But I. I dispute you only in the relative level. The, where I put the onus uh, for the rejection of I Netanyahu. But I. But I. But I. But I understand. I get your point. I. I. I take issue with with the way that you place the blame squarely on, on Netanyahu's head when I think that he has been uh, the victim of an incredible campaign of demonization. He has been the victim. But he me, has been the victim. I agree with you. But I have to, but I need to go to today because it's where we are. And I don't know, I walk around with this very heavy feeling of dread uh, because of what's happening in this country. And the question is, how do we get back to that, to that iconic moment, you know, uh, how many years ago? Thirty-eight hundred years ago, with uh, with with Jacob and the angel on on the eastern side of the Jordan River, and 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 get to a point where where we can stand up and command that people accept us for who we are. And and here, this is why I I find what Naftali Bennett, with his kippah on his head, is doing so incredibly incredibly discouraging because if if we are now adrift on the right where you have people on the right who don't understand how to govern and and what has to be done in order to get to the other side of that jordan river then you know how do we how do we get it back how do we ensure that where we are now is fleeting and that it's a and and that it's a and that it's something that we can Pass over, particularly when you look around us and you see the context in which everything is happening in the Western world, which is, you know, uh, lost sight of who it, who it is and 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 why it has a reason. The people of the West to be proud of of who they are. Let me, let me address. Uh, uh, I don't uh, mean to interrupt you, but I. I no, no, you know, it's fine. I think let it's, me uh, address that feeling of dread and the fleeting moment. Those words. So. So I have that feeling of dread also. I have that feeling of dread. And, and uh, in an interview I gave recently, I ended up saying that I am pessimistic. Uh, I'm pessimistic. I have the same feeling of dread that you have. I have the same feeling that this, this, uh, this, this situation where we are now have a state of Israel is a fleeting moment, okay, and that we are destroying ourselves. I have that same feeling. But, okay, I went on a hike, a beautiful hike, last Wednesday with a grandchild, okay. Uh, we drove up to the Golan. He was driving. I don't drive that distance of those distances anymore. Okay, my family objects to my driving outside of the city. Uh, and, um, and we discussed the world. We saw beautiful flowers, it was gorgeous. And, Perfect time and, to go hiking. And, 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 and he said, I don't have that feeling. I, I was born here 20 years ago, and for me, Israel is permanent. I, 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 I can't understand you at all. Yeah? You came here before. Uh, you, you lived when the state was, was established. Okay? But I was born into it. For me, it's, I can't think of, of any other possibility. Israel is here to stay. Okay? And, and, and I think that feeling, and I think we have that feeling probably in 80, 90 percent of the population. I don't know as long if that's as good. we have that feeling, that, 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 that's, a, that's, a, that's a reason for optimism. 
accept it. That it just means that they're taking it for feels granted. Absolutely, this 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 is their world. Yes, they, it's not. Uh, it's I, I I I am I have the same pessimism, the same feeling of dread that you have. But here we have this younger generation who, this new generation, this of real, real sabras who can't imagine another world. Okay. Well, we have to end it there, but I, I, I'll just say that it's important that we, it, it's a blessing that we have this generation and, and others and everybody to come, God willing. But we also have to remember just how fragile everything is and make sure we protect it. So I want to thank you. Okay. for protecting it and I want to thank you for building it and I want to thank you for sacrificing for it and I want to thank you for everything that you do and for joining me today my first uh, show with uh, Jewish News Syndicate JNS.org um, and, uh, and may you have many 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 more happy years with your family with your children and grandchildren and great grandchildren mm -hmm. here in Sion in Jerusalem Thank you very much, Thank Carolyn. You. It's been uh, great, and I think you actually do wonderful work. Yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, I think uh, it, you're just wonderful. Very influential. Very, and it's because of people like you that we have this uh, this feeling on the part of my uh, on the part of the younger generation that. that Israel is here to stay. Yeah. God willing, God willing. Well, okay. thank you. If you notice, I didn't interrupt you when you were flattering me again. So there you have it. I, it, it, it. I will never interrupt people who are paying me compliments. So at any rate, thank you very much for joining us today. And we'll see you again next week with another episode. Chag Sameach. Okay.